Hello everyone, Brian here again, and in today's video I will be going over exercise 5-8, which is the amino acid decarboxylation test. Alright, so first things first, let's check out uh, the bacteria that you will be handling for this lab. The first one is P. stewarti, and the second one will be E. coli. And because both of these guys are not BSL-2, uh, wearing lab glove or yes, wearing uh, gloves for this lab will be optional. All right, so what you'll need, uh, you'll need to grab a tube rack alongside a inoculating loop and a Bunsen burner, of course. And once you have that, you will then need to grab three lysine decarboxylase broths. After that, you'll need some sterile mineral oil and finally, you will need some sterile transfer pipettes in order to transfer the mineral oil into your decarboxylase broths. Cool, so now that you have all your items gathered, the first thing you want to do is, of course, label your three lysine decarboxylation broths, two of them with the organisms that I've mentioned earlier, and one being your control. Now, once you have labeled all of them, you can then proceed to inoculate your broths, um, excluding the control uh, for obvious reasons. Now, once you have inoculated your broths, um, you will then need to add a few drops of mineral oil, um, just creating a thin, uniform layer on top of the broth, and that, and that is because you want to prevent any oxygen uh, from diffusing into the um, decarboxylation medium. And once you have done that, you want to make sure that the cap to all of your uh, test tubes are, are well shut, and you can then place them in the tube rack located in the back of the class so that the bioprep team can then incubate uh, your ly lysine decarboxylase broths uh, for 48 hours. All right, so now that I've kind of gone over the general outline of what you'll be doing um, for the lab portion, um, in this part I just kind of wanted to visually demonstrate um, what you'll be doing uh, just to kind of help you guys get a better idea of what to expect. So, of course, the first thing you want to do is grab your trusty inoculating loop, and I hope your Bunsen burner is turned on and the flame is properly set. And as always, the first thing you want to do is grab one of your bacterial slants alongside your inoculating loop. Make sure that your inoculating loop uh, is properly sterilized. Let it cool down for a bit. Um, but while that is occurring, you can open up your uh, bacterial slant and always make sure to flame the tip to sterilize it. Now at this point, what you want to do is just then grab a small amount of the culture itself. And before closing the tube itself, you want to make sure to flame the tip again to maintain sterility. Now at this point, you'll grab one of your lysine decarboxylase broths and do the same thing by heating the tip and just inoculate the broth um, with your organism by just dipping the inoculating loop inside and giving it a few uh, mixes. Once you're done with that, you will then want to flame the tip of your lysine decarboxylase broth and then cap it off to maintain sterility. And of course, before moving on to your next organism, to always sterilize your loop. Now there's one more step uh, in this lab experiment, and that is to add the mineral oil. This is critical because the mineral oil is um, absolutely necessary uh, for this test to work properly. So of course you want to work near your Bunsen burner in order to maintain sterility. And what you'll do is just kind of take the top off, use your transfer sterile transfer pipette, uh, grab some mineral oil uh, inside, 
and just to pour a few drops into the uh, test tube that you've just inoculated. And you want to, um, your lab manual says you want to create a layer that is around three to four millimeters thick. Um, I don't think you'll have rulers to do that, but from my general experience, it takes around three to four drops at the most, uh, depending on how uh, big the drops were um, as you were transferring the mineral oil uh, into your test tube. Um, but of course, it, it really doesn't take much and you don't want to use more than what's necessary. The, the key thing to look for is that you have a uniform layer on top um, that will tell you that no oxygen will get through uh, because a mineral oil layer kind of acts as a cover or a seal. All right, so let's move on to part two. Now in part two of the lab, you'll be coming back, of course, and collecting the decarboxylase bronze that you've labeled. And what you want to do is look for color changes. And once you have uh, recorded all of your information, um, you will then write that down in the table uh, located in the specific exercise in your lab manual, and then interpret your results. So what does that look like? So when you come back, what, you, what you'll see is something very close to this. Um, of course, this is just a visual diagram. Um, in real life, things may not be as clear as this, as you guys have, may have already experienced. But uh, generally, um, this is what you should expect. So in our first tube here, uh, it seems the color has not changed at all, which is a good sign because uh, your first test tube is your control. And so that indicates that there was no contamination here. Uh, your second test tube will contain an organism that is positive for lysine decarboxylase, and that is proven here by this purple color change. Now your third test tube, uh, which you've inoculated, uh, the bacteria was able to ferment the glucose uh, inside the medium, um, turning the solution yellow as the uh, indicator that is uh, used in this test itself um, turns yellow whenever the environment becomes more acidic. And this right here is the results table. So once again, you'll check for color. Purple is positive. No color change is negative. Yellow is also negative, uh, but uh, with the addition of fermentation. So how does that fermentation occur? Well, if we were to look at the lysine decarboxylase broth at a molecular level, um, of course it contains many different kinds of chemical components and nutrients, um, but in this di diagram I've just kind of simplified it with the purple uh, representing the lysine and these brown uh, molecules here uh, that represent glucose. And what happens is, and this actually occurs in the broth that is purple as well, is that the bacteria that you've inoculated into these into the broth um, will then ferment the glucose uh, that is in the solution. And that is because of this layer of mineral oil here, which I mentioned earlier was very important, in that it blocks any oxygen from entering or diffusing into the broth medium itself. And because there is no oxygen, the bacteria is then forced to start fermenting in order to produce energy. And the process of fermentation creates a lot of acidic byproducts. And that acidic byproduct uh, interacts with the uh, indicator that is within the solution, uh, turning it yellow. Alright, so let's kind of dive into the theory and the application um, 
of the decarboxylase test itself. And I know you guys are probably wondering uh, what causes that purple color formation. Um, and I will, I will get into that, but first I, I kind of want to talk a, a little bit about why this test is used and why it's so important. So the decarboxylase broth tests are used to differentiate organisms in the family Enterobacteraceae and to distinguish them from other gram-negative rods. Now this sounds very uh, similar. Um, I, it's uh, quite similar to the citrate test that I talked about in the uh, past video. Um, this is not part of the INVIC battery of tests. Um, this is uh, separate. However, um, it is still useful um, in uh, distinguishing uh, specific species of bacteria that belong to this family. And as I mentioned, uh, in the previous video as well, um, there are, are a lot of species uh, that fall under this genus um, that tend to cause us problems. And so it is important that uh, we have these tests to identify them and get to the root cause of any issues uh, or problems with our health uh, when it comes to bacteria uh, in this family. All right, and we'll just kind of set this all up. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, this test in a way kind of looks for the decarboxylase enzyme or the ability to produce it. Um, now the thing with the decarboxylase uh, test is that uh, there are a lot of different uh, amino acids out there, uh, but the three most popular amino acids uh, that tend to be used for our purposes of identifying bacteria is arginine, lysine, and ornithine, with uh, lysine being the one um, used to demonstrate uh, the experiment uh, um, <clears throat> the experiment that we're working on currently. Um, and of course, while this media itself is very complex, um, there are a lot of different chemical components in there. Uh, uh, the two most important uh, components uh, for this test is glucose and, of course, lysine. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the glucose is important because uh, you need to... Um, allow the bacteria to, of course, um, grow, but um, also perform fermentation, um, which allows the uh, environment inside the medium to uh, become more acidic. And that acidity is uh, important in order to activate the gene that produces the decarboxylase enzyme. So if there was no glucose in there, um, the bacteria would not be able to create those acidic byproducts that is needed to activate that gene. Um, but in this uh, scenario here, what happened is as the bacteria was utilizing the glucose and forcing the environment to become very acidic, it then uh, cause the bacteria to, of course, create uh, decarboxylase enzyme that would then break down the lysine. And in the process of breaking down lysine, uh, it produces this byproduct known as cadaverine uh, that is basic in nature. And as more cadaverine is uh, produced and begins to uh, increase in its concentration in the solution, it then shifts the environment uh, in the opposite direction, making it more basic or alkaline. And um, once the pH reaches somewhere around 6.8, the indicator will then shift from a yellow color to a more purple color.
All right, so I know that was a lot of information, um, but I've kind of broken it down here into three key components that I feel um, are the major points here in that uh, you should really uh, understand this in order to know what is going on when you do utilize the uh, decarboxylase test. So first things first, the reason why this test is used is to be able to break down um, the large amount of species found in the family Enterobacteraceae uh, by using these specific amino acids that I mentioned, uh, lysine uh, being the one that we used, that only a certain type of decarboxylase enzyme can target. Now, certain bacteria will produce decarboxylase enzymes, but um, that enzyme can only interact with arginine. Um, and so if you inoculated that bacteria in a lysine decarboxylase uh, broth, uh, that bacteria would not be able to um, utilize that lysine and would just end up creating a uh, uh, a broth that is just acidic and uh, yellow, uh, which is um, negative, <clears throat> which is considered negative. Um, and yeah, and that follow, transitions nicely into the second point, which is the interaction between glucose and fermentation and how that dynamic is required um, in order to make the uh, solution in the medium acidic. Um, you need that acidity um, because the gene that produces decarboxylase uh, is not turned on um, unless uh, the environment has a very low pH. But once that acidic environment is achieved uh, and, and the gene starts cranking out uh, a bunch of decarboxylase enzymes, and those enzymes start interacting with the lysine in the solution, or uh, whichever um, amino acid that you use, arginine and uh, ornithine being the other examples, um, those byproducts from those amino acids uh, will then start to turn the uh, broth medium uh, to be more basic or alkaline. And as the pH rises uh, due, due to that factor, um, it then uh, shifts the indicator uh, to turn uh, purple. And purple is the color uh, by which uh, you can then consider the test positive. All right, I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, and if you guys like this video, please uh, like it and um, leave any suggestions um, as I am open to all of them in order to improve my videos. And so thank you guys uh, once again and have a good night.